Good afternoon, everybody. It is Monday, August 4th. It's 1 o'clock Eastern Time, and this is Admissions Live. I'm your host, Chris Dorso, and today on the show, my guest is Katie Munger from Castleton, uh, Castleton College in Vermont. Katie is the Director of Digital Media at Castleton, and we will talk a little bit about how admissions offices and marketing and communications teams could and should work together better. Uh, if any of you have been uh, working in either side of that table, uh, then you know that uh, there's a lot that goes into everything that we do, both from the website as well as the uh, admissions, the enrollment side. Uh, and uh, it's going to be, uh, we're going to sort of brainstorm some ideas of, of different things that we can do to work together. As always, join us, of course, uh, live on the back channel if you are on Twitter using the hashtag Higher Ed Live. Admissions Live is, of course, part of the Higher Ed Live Network, a series of professional development web shows and podcasts, which are always free and accessible to you in our archives at higheredlive.com and on iTunes. Be a part of our broadcast by tuning in live here and sharing your insights and questions, again, using that Higher Ed Live hashtag, and you can receive weekly updates with live show dates and times by subscribing to the Higher Ed Live newsletter at higheredlive.com. Today's show would not be possible without the support of all of my colleagues here at Stony Brook as well as at M. Stoner. Uh, all of our Higher Ed Live shows, including Admissions Live, are produced by M. Stoner, a marketing communications firm that works with educational institutions on branding, strategy, web design, and more. Face it, from the very beginning of your career, you've never had that professional stamp that says you're an expert in enrollment management, and now you have that opportunity. Abilene Christian University's new graduate certificate in enrollment management provides four highly interactive online courses that can be completed in as little as 10 months. Combined with a unique residency component, the program is designed to help enrollment management professionals expand their knowledge and give them a credential to set themselves apart in the field. And you can visit acu.edu slash enrollment management to learn more about that program. Do you know if students are leaving your college visit with inspiration and not just information? A Welcome to College Visit Audit will reveal what your visitors are hearing and what they should be hearing. Contact Justin Bayer via Twitter at welcome to college. That's welcome, the number two college or email justin at welcometocollege.com for more information. And finally, Chegg Enrollment Services, formerly Zinch, invites you to join them for Prepare to Win, a special presentation at the 2014 NACAC conference in Indianapolis. This special event will take place at Lucas Oil Stadium, downtown Indianapolis, and feature NFL Hall of Famer Ronnie Lott, uh, uh, old-time 49er, uh, and uh, the event will begin at 6 p.m. on September 17th. Uh, so there is a link going out that we will tweet uh, that has the RSVP link, and so if you are going to NACAC in Indy uh, in September, next month, oh my goodness, September's next month, holy moly, next month, yes. Uh, next month in Indy, uh, you can go and meet Ronnie Law and uh, get me an autograph or something because I grew up as a 49er fan. So there you go. A little something for your favorite admissions live host. Nothing against Nicole. Uh, anyway, so uh, let's welcome our guest. And she's popping out of the screen there, Katie Munger. Katie, welcome. Thanks, Chris. So, uh, Katie, talk a little bit about uh, your background. Um, for those of you who, uh, I mean, I come at this obviously from an admissions perspective, but even my job has shifted in the last uh, year or so here at Stony Brook, last two years, uh, to uh, include really more web, social media kinds of things. And even though I'm physically in the admissions office, uh, my primary uh, target audience is on the other side of a screen, by and large. Uh, and so, Katie, talk about uh, a little bit about your background and how you came to where you are. Yeah, sure. So uh, when I was an undergrad, I was in student affairs, so I climbed the ranks through Res Life, and I really enjoyed that um, aspect, and I really enjoyed being in higher ed. <clears throat> and so um, when it came to looking for um, a career, I um, was looking at local, I wanted to be back in Vermont, and I was looking at um, some of the colleges there. And Castleton had this great opportunity in the admissions office with um, transfer <clears throat> counseling as well as doing their um, e-recruitment and online marketing. So um, I did that for a couple of years here 
Um, I learned a lot about enrollment services, which I hadn't had experience prior, prior to that. And then we kind of reorganized a little bit, and now I am the director of digital media, as you said, in uh, our marketing communications office. I run our social media channels, um, our website, our digital marketing, but I also do that e-recruitment still with admissions. So I still really work very closely with that office, too. So uh, the uh, a lot of us, you know, nobody the old uh, standby. Nobody grows up wanting to be an admissions counselor. We all kind of fall into it, and then we sort of spin off and do other things. Uh, and that certainly uh, seems to be the case with you as well. Mm -hmm. um, the the issue that uh, a lot of us have uh, from the admissions end when working with our friends over on the marketing side of the house um, is really the silo piece, and that's sort of what we're we're talking about today is. Uh, getting everybody to understand where everybody else is coming from and, and getting everybody to work together uh, because we are ultimately all on the same team even though we are we may be siloed um, I think the the biggest example of that for uh, for us many years ago uh, we met with our communications team here about uh, the things that we were doing on the road and, and it's not necessarily a web perspective but it's a print perspective uh, our communications folks here which does everything from web to print uh, across the board uh, they uh, made and created all of our print uh, materials that we used on the road the table display the the boards uh, the, the mm -hmm. print pieces, all of that. Uh, and we sat down and had a meeting with them to review your review, the kinds of things we wanted to do for the following year. And we actually set up the table as we would do it at a college fair. And we set it up with the banner and the board and everything. Uh, and almost to a person, uh, the communications team had never seen it in action. They'd never actually seen their product uh, in its natural habitat. Uh, and so I thought that was sort of interesting that even though they designed it, they didn't really have a sense of what they were designing for. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, and I think that's what happens when you're doing and your, your perspective is different. And it's one thing to say, hey, we need a, a nice glossy brochure, uh, mm -hmm. but it's a whole other thing to be able to say, uh, you know, this is you know, the, your audience and, and how it's actually going to play. Now, Stony Brook being a, a larger institution, I'm assuming that, of course, at a nice smaller place like Castleton, uh, you guys are silo-free, yes? <laughs> you, right, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it just, what it means is there's um, a lot fewer people doing the same amount of things. So I think sometimes you end up being almost more siloed. Um, you know, because it's just a scale, it's a sliding scale. But um, I think what we, what you have to do, just like you said, they, they had to admit that they didn't know that they're that, that that they had never seen the table or didn't know that you were actually physically holding it, and it wasn't something that was just going to be mailed out. You know, you're going to have a con it's a conversation piece when you're uh, recruiting. You know, you're going out on the road and recruiting in person. It's not just something you're like, okay, tossing in a person and then walking away. So um, that's a completely different type of material um, than you're just then you're going to send out as a mailer and not have a conversation about. So um, but so it begins with admitting what you don't know. I mean when I when we kind of reorganized we talked about the enrollment cycle and people looked at me like I had seven heads. But <laughs> you know, I know that students come in in the fall and then they graduate in the spring, you know, but people weren't aware really of where admissions was at necessarily throughout the year and throughout the summer even. Um, that there's a lot going on. So um, I remember somebody over a Christmas break once, I ran into a professor and she said, when I was still in admissions, and she said to me, oh, you guys, you, you have nothing going on right now, right? You have nothing going on in admissions. And I looked at her and I was like, <laughs> what? I couldn't believe that somebody would even be so disconnected from that. Yeah. Well, that's the, uh, well, you're, it's, and you're in education, so you're off for the summer, right? <laughs> there's, 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 just nothing happens over it's the summer. The month of January. There's nothing to do in January. <laughs> we brought in the class. We're done. All right. Thanks for watching Admissions Live, everybody. It's been it's been a pleasure. Um, so, I think it's you know it's important to know that the uh, it, admissions is a it's a year round uh, thing. It, it's not just a matter of okay, let's just bring in more students and it just sort of happens. Uh, and in some cases, you know the the big. Uh, big name high end schools, the students probably fall on their laps. And, uh, you know, speaking of, of so I had a, a, this is going back many years, I had a conversation with a colleague um, who was telling me about a conversation that he had had 
uh, with a, a admissions person at one of the local community colleges. And the uh, community college person was referring to uh, their enrollment plan. And he laughed and he said, well, community colleges, community colleges don't have an enrollment plan. You just open the doors and people show up. And there's that perception that, you know, at every level of higher ed, that this stuff just kind of happens and, and you don't need to market and you don't need to, to have a plan. Uh, you just kind of throw open the doors and, and, you know, we get the question from faculty every year, well, just get us better students. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not just that easy to do that. Like, there's there's a lot of work that goes into getting those those better students. Um, and the, it's the more of X major, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very true. Go out and find more art majors or more English right. majors. <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and I think the you know the the challenge from uh, an enrollment end uh, is that you know we need to know a lot of things about uh, a lot of we need to know a lot of things about everything. Unfortunately, on campus, because you would be incredibly amazed at the kinds of questions we get. We bring our, we have a couple of grad students in our office who answer emails and, and do a lot of our, um, you know, sort of front door kinds of things. And the training process for them is intense because there's so much that they have to learn. Even though a lot of them come through the Stony Brook undergraduate program uh, to know, you know, how to answer the questions and, and how to. Uh, you know, our application, the Common App, went live August 1st, and so all of a sudden we're getting tons of questions about how the process is and, and uh, how things are read and all those kinds of things, and you don't know that unless you're involved in that process. And that comes from the university side as well as the public side. Uh, you know, faculty and, and other departments don't know how the enrollment piece kind of works. Right, and, um, you know, I, I say, and I've said this to you before, that I think that I think of admissions and marketing as the intelligence agency of the school. You know, they're the ones that kind of go out and spy. No, they go out and ask questions of the other departments to really know um, everything about everything that's happening, and because um, they're the people that are out there talking to the people. Plus, from a marketing perspective, I don't get to have that one-on-one -on -one, um, interaction with that 17, 18 year old crowd where admissions is on the road and gets to have those conversations and sees what questions they're asking and, and what the interests are and how those trends change. And so that's really helpful for me as a marketer to know um, what that what my prospective audience is, is looking for. How do you find that balance, though, as a web person? Because there is a lot to know. And, and obviously, at a big place like ours, that's going to be multiplied uh, by a million, uh, but regardless of your scale, there's there's still a lot to know from a web perspective of how to. We'll just let's let's bring it down. Like from a social media perspective, for example, how do you uh, uh, how do you, how do you decide? How do you help or find uh, everything that you need to get into uh, your feed and, and get that information out there? Um, it's really about um, asking the right questions and asking them far enough in advance. You know, I I can't reach out to student life the week of homecoming and ask what's happening, what the events are at homecoming weekend. You know, I need to have that date. I need to know that that date is coming up a year before it's coming up to really plan out um, the next year and where, where my focus is going to have to shift to depending upon what's happening. You know, sometimes the admissions message is the most important message and sometimes I have got to reflect to our current students what's happening too. Um, but at the end of the day, the prospective student still wants to know what the current student is up to when I'm on social media. So if I'm only using my university channel to talk about admissions, it looks like nothing else happens on my campus. Well, that's not true. So it's kind of finding that balance of um, what actually does happen on campus, um, what actually, um, and when those things happen, and then trying to balance that, uh, that focus. But it's, it's really knowing, having open lines of communication, knowing who to talk to, and, and how early I really need that information. How do you do that there? How do you keep those communications line, communication lines open? Yeah, so um, one of the ways I do that is uh, I am on all of my admissions counselor email distribution lists. So when um, uh, the assistant dean or the dean have an important update, a change in policy, a new program that's coming out that they're telling the counselors about first, because those are usually the people that hear about that at first on campus, I'm copied on all of those emails. When a counselor responds and asks a question about that, 
I'm a copy on that email. And it's great because I have a really I built a really great relationship with them. Yes, it helped me being in that office. But I'm down there a lot. I have lunch with them. I have a personal relationship with them. And so they feel comfortable having those conversations with me too, being copied on them. Um, and then I have, you know, I kind of reach out and have um, a meetings with different directors on campus too to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm in their workflow as well. Because um, I want to help them. I want them to know that I want to help get their message out and I want to help make their events successful. And I want people to be there and be present for, their, for whatever's happening in their department. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, I think it, it, everything is, is enrollment management. Uh, you know, from a, and enrollment management is even a, a newish term. It used to be admissions. And we talk now about enrollment management and, and that retention's included in that and, and how everything really is along the spectrum. You mentioned prospective students want to see what current students are doing. And so pictures from your, you know, big spring festival, uh, you've got to find a way to get that into your yield materials in some capacity because if folks, th that's a need to know kind of a thing. That's the kind of thing that students as they're helping make, you know, trying to figure out that decision in March and April, uh, mm -hmm. the importance of, of getting those messages to them, you can't overstate that because that's, uh, that's, that's part of what you do. And the admissions office has got to be aware of those kinds of things, much like you've got to be aware of all the things that the admissions office is doing. Right. So we talked a little bit about the cycle piece before, and I think that it's mm -hmm. important to, uh, to know how these cycles kind of work. And, you know, we joked about being off in the summer and all that, but, uh, you know, admissions being year-round, uh, marketing is, is year-round as well, and those things right. obviously overlap uh, quite a bit and from an enrollment end you know we're looking right now at our fall 2015 class and uh, everything that goes into right now okay let's the application is live let's let's bump up applications get the word out that uh, now it's now is the time to to get that stuff out there but we're also looking at uh, 2016 and beyond and not for nothing we're still really kind of finishing out 2014 and right. making sure that all the information that needs to get to the group that's going to come here in two weeks and obviously we have an orientation office that does all of the sort of practical day-to-day -day things but those students who you got into the pipeline uh, you know your various social media pipelines for example uh, they're still part of that pipeline they haven't gone anywhere it's not that uh, the the you know they enroll and then it's like okay I can stop following uh, the Harvard uh, Twitter accounts now. Mm -hmm. Right. And we sit down we sit down with our um, admissions team every year, usually in the summer. Um, and we say we look at the calendar and we say, okay, when do you need X material by? When do you need this email to go back? Well I need and then we work backwards from that date because I mean it sounds so basic, but it helps so much. <laughs> you know, I need all of the text and I need all of these photos so many weeks before that because then I have to design it and then, you know, so we, and then it has to go to a printer and then we need to get a proof back and then, like, there's just so many pieces to that. But, um, you know, if you're not thinking about that from an admission standpoint, you're like, okay, well, I need this in two weeks. Maybe I should let somebody know. <laughs> well, okay, well, I actually needed it two months ago <laughs> in order to be for you to have it in two weeks now. So and that that ends up being a lot of the time where we are not not just for and not anymore for admissions, but um, for some other departments on campus. And you really need to be uh, conscious of those timelines, even when you're doing sort of internal kinds of things, because mm -hmm. every fall we overhaul our admissions presentation. We've been doing it for years, and so I came up with this great new admissions. I'm using Prezi for the first time, mm -hmm. uh, even though I can't take Prezi, but I'm using Prezi for the first time, and it's going to be great. Uh, and I put together this great thing, and my supervisor said, hey, did you run it past our communications folks? And I said, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you should you should probably do that mm -hmm. just to make sure you know the the branding things and all those kinds of things are right. And so I said, all right, fine. I ran it through communications. They found about eighteen different things that I had that were not quite consistent with the things that needed to be, and right. some were like just minor design things, you know, uh, borders and things on images for consistency. Uh, but some were you know silly things like. Uh, not silly things, but but consistency issues where uh, you know the the way that the web address you know I still had a www.stonybrook.edu and you can you don't need the www anymore things like that uh, that just from a, a consistency standpoint are important when you're talking mm -hmm. about branding and, and talking about the communication right. uh, structure of sort of how everything fits together. 
right? And they might have a list of words that they don't want you to use, or a list of words they do want you to use, or maybe, you know, in admissions, I'm always, whenever I'm writing for admissions the first time through, I'm using lots of exclamation points and getting really excited about things because it's all really excited, and then I have to go back through and take out all those exclamation points. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just really things like that. Um, um, that when you're when you're thinking in that mindset, you don't necessarily think of. But it's always good to have somebody else look at it and know that you have that friend. <laughs> That's what, that you can that can say. You know what, Chris? You need to fix these 18 things, and you're not going to take that personally. You're going to be you're looking at it from a perspective of we're both trying. We both have the same goal. We right. both care about our institution. Yeah. So, and ultimately, it is about sort of having that consistent uh, front. I feel like I've used the word consistent 14 times in the last 30 <laughs> seconds, but uh, you know that that there's um, it, there's a necessity there to to have that, uh, to, you know, so that you so you have one voice uh, as the institution and one image as the institution. Exactly. So um, I want to uh, flip the script a little bit because we talk about uh, you know breaking down the silo piece, but isn't there also that line between marketing and enrollment? Because uh, the the concept of an admissions office as the sales force be of the university uh, drives uh, admissions people bananas. Uh, we don't like being thought of as salespeople. Uh, we, uh, you know, it, it evokes images of uh, people working on commission. It evokes used car imagery. Uh, it evo uh, evokes a lot of, uh, and we've all been next to people at college fairs where you look at the things that they're saying to students and they're like, are you clinically insane? Um, you know, we're counselors. That's our thing. Is we're admissions counselors. We're not admissions salespeople. And it's your job to sell the college. You're the marketing folks. It's not my job to be a marketer. Uh, it's my job at a, as an admissions person to, to counsel and, uh, and to help find fit. You know, we're all talking about fit, not about, uh, not about the sales piece. How do you reconcile that? Especially in your case, as somebody who's gone from that sort of counseling side uh, over to the sales side. I, I mean, I try not to even think of what I do as selling. I still, I still have that admissions mindset as fit. I mean, I want to portray an honest image of what our school is and what we can provide. Because if I, if I go over the line a little bit and I, you know, show something that's not true to who we are or some, and I don't make something clear that this is a one-time only thing, whatever the thing is, then um, then I'm going to, actually, I'm not working towards, and maybe I'll get a couple extra students from that, but I'm not going to be able to retain that student, you know, that's that has seen that false thing or that one-time only thing and thought that it was something that was reoccurring and it really drew them here. Um, so I like to, I want to also work towards that fit as well. Um, so, because sales... Sales is good for some <laughs> things. <but laughs> so even though you're trying to couch it, you're trying to make it sound like it's uh, like it's a bad thing or a good thing. Right, and it's it's not it's not a bad thing. I just um, you know I, I don't when I walk into a store and I am looking for a shirt and somebody comes over. I mean, I used to work in retail. You know, can I help you find anything? No. Okay, well, let me tell you about my sales. Okay, great. Do you, are you sure you don't need help? No, I want I want to look around. You know, I want to experience what's happening here, and maybe something will catch my eye. But if you come over to me every five seconds and you're like, "Hey, hey, hey, do you know that shirt's on sale?" No, it's not. It's not gonna. It's not gonna help me. And so it's the same thing. I want to make sure that I want to make sure that it's a that it's a good fit. <laughs> so um, the uh, uh, last month was the uh, ACT Enrollment Planning Conference uh, mm -hmm. in Chicago, and. Uh, Brian Niles from uh, Target X had a presentation about uh, five dirty words that uh, you know the colleges need to use to think about it and use more often. I'm actually going to uh, drop that into a tweet so you all have the link. Hang on a second. Boom, tweeted. And um, oh, I forgot to put the hashtag. Ah, curse you, internet. Uh, and so um, the, the the basic gist of, of what Brian was talking about was uh, the the dirty words that what is. There was a, the article is in the, uh, the Chronicle uh, from uh, Eric Hoover uh, about dirty words that admissions officers should embrace. And the five dirty words that he talks about are customer, sales, competition, experience, and accountability. 
And you know, those are all things that we don't like to think about from uh, you know uh, from an emissions perspective. Uh, but they're legitimate. I mean, ultimately, students are paying literally tens of thousands of dollars a year. They are buying a new car uh, for uh, the the price of what they're paying for for higher ed, uh, and it behooves them to shop around, and it behooves them uh, to to look at the competition and to uh, you know to to be aware of the the experience. Uh, and it's one thing to you know slap a, a ranking on a screen or whatever, but there's a lot more to it than that. And I guess that's where fit really comes into play as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know those are you know we need to think as admissions folks uh, more about uh, you know how this we don't operate in a void. You know, and, and higher ed now in 2014, students are more savvy than they ever have been. Parents are more savvy than they ever have been mm -hmm. about affordability, about uh, you know making sure that uh, they're getting bang for their buck. I mean, colleges are talking about ROI. I go back to my last job 10 years ago, and uh, our VP, um, who I didn't realize at the time, but I realize now was really very forward thinking, was talking about ROI 15 years ago. I was like ROI. People don't care about ROI like they care about the basketball team, right. and and they do. They care about ROI. They they want to go out. And they want to get a job. They want to get to grad schools. They want to uh, you know not walk out with with thousands of dollars in debt or whatever it is that their their individual situation uh, calls for. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it's like the sales thing keeps keeps eating at me <laughs> too. Just like just like it's like when you go buy when you go to buy a car, you know, and you're like, I want a car that flies and is silver. And the salesperson talks you into a car, he says, Oh yeah, this car flies and it's silver. Well it actually doesn't fly and it's red. You know, what are you gonna do with that car? You're gonna go get it you're gonna trade it in and you're gonna get a new one. You know, so if if, if I'm telling you that my that our college is you know, small with, you know, whatever, you know, 14, 14 to 1 class ratio, you know, uh, student to teacher ratio and, and all of that. And then it ends up you walk in and you're, all of your classes are in huge lecture halls. I've given you the wrong impression of what it is. So um, I want to give you the honest to gosh truth <laughs> of what you can expect. And if that's not for you, then okay. You know, I'm going to go, I'm not going to try to push you into something else. I get questions on our Facebook all the time that are like, do you have such and such a program? Like, do you have culinary arts? And instead of, I used to say, no, we don't, but we have this degree where you could do this with that. And like, I'm not going to convince that student that wants a culinary arts program <laughs> that you should get a liberal arts degree at my school. You know, I'm not. So I'm like, no, but these other colleges in our system do. Or, or I'm like, I'm sorry, we don't, but good luck on your search because. Right. You know, because I shouldn't be working with them. If the person tells me a career goal, I might be able to give them majors that might help them get there. But if you're saying specifically that you want to learn how to be an engineer for bridges, I don't have an engineering program that I'm going to be able to sell you on. So, yeah. Yeah, that's why I say we've all stood next to, uh, you know, I, I, the things you remember, sitting next to a, a health professions mm -hmm. uh, for-profit school that was near me once many years ago that no matter what the student walked up and asked about English whatever uh, they gave him the hard sell on uh, you know the health profession so it's like well whoa slow down like first of all you're making the rest of us look bad second of all you're not really doing anything for yourselves or for the student involved right. uh, you know so it, it really is about uh, you know marketing and, and the right way uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's not necessarily about enrolling every student but enrolling the right students and showing that reality of, of what uh, your what's what happens at your school socially culturally financially whatever uh, very 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 important absolutely so uh, and then again ties sort of back into the the breaking down of silos and making sure that uh, you are reaching out uh, across uh, you know across departmental lines and everything to make sure that 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 word gets out there. Lots of admissions offices, our office, uh, as we were talking before the show, uh, your office is there. We do a pretty solid two weeks of training sessions uh, every uh, before the start of the semester, uh, every every summer slash fall, to sort of refresh on on you know what's new and and what's important and what's going on from various faculty departments, all those kinds of things. 
include your communications folks on that. Uh, in almost every case, we have some of our communications folks uh, with us. You know, if they're coming to visit us, uh, then they're with us. We did a tour of our arts facility, uh, and our communications folks were there, not to take pictures and to you know do the the. Uh, the, the publication aspect of it, but mm -hmm. just to see what we were seeing uh, yeah. and sort of how, how students are going to live that uh, and, and how, to commu how we were going to communicate that with students so that they can communicate that with students the same way. So very, very important. I love your idea of just getting your communication folks on your email list. Everybody's got an admissions office distribution list. Why not include your communications folks on there, uh, particularly for those important announcement -y kind of things that are really, really relevant for for everybody. Right. Like, had you been talking about your Prezi idea and your communications person was on that email, they might have said that stuff before. Hey, make sure you do X, Y, and Z while you're building that, you know, so that, and then at the end, <laughs> you know, because you could have watched out for those things before. I'm sure they weren't major fixes, but they were things that had you know, had you realized, um, you could have gone along the way. Ain't that the truth? And don't we all think we're not going to make that same mistake? But considering uh, that today was my original target for having that PowerPoint Prezi done, and now I'm looking at mid-September. Yeah, unfortunately, things happen. Sometimes life gets in the way. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we are uh, running short on time. So I'm yeah. going to uh, uh, to to bring us to a close. But uh, Katie, I want to thank you for taking the time uh, this afternoon to join us. Uh, and uh, it's important to sort of keep the conversation going uh, uh, this uh, fall uh, in Portland. Um, be presenting uh, on uh, just this and really uh, sort of bridging that gap uh, between the admissions folks uh, and the web folks and how we can all work together better. So if you have not yet registered for High Ed Web uh, 14 in Portland, October 18th to the 22nd or something along those lines, um, I can't stress enough how important those uh, conferences are for really learning about uh, all the different things that we do. And it's, it's easy to think of, of all of us as competitors. Uh, and uh, we certainly had this uh, discussion before on, on Admissions Live. Uh, but all the good things that we do and how we can really work together and, and get ideas from each other. Uh, and, and, well, I could go off on professional development, but I won't. Thanks, Katie. Thank you, for Katie, for joining me. Um, and Admissions Live will be back again uh, in two weeks with my co-host, uh, Nicole Lentini. And uh, next on uh, Higher Ed Live, let me just pull that up, uh, is Wednesday. Uh, this Wednesday at 1 p.m., Heather Shea Gasser connects with da Dr. Kathy Collins, uh, Dr. Rachel Beach, and Robert Coffey to discuss how student affairs can best meet the needs of the influx of international students on campus. And with everybody uh, looking to get more international folks, uh, that is certainly very, very relevant. A lot of, uh, a lot of you are probably... Uh, getting ready for international move-ins and all that kind of stuff in the next couple of weeks. So get reminders about this and other great shows by subscribing to the Higher Ed Live newsletter. Uh, you can browse the archives at higheredlive.com. Uh, you can get us on iTunes. Uh, you can watch us live, of course, here every second and, no, first and third Monday? First and third Monday. I almost messed up our schedule. Uh, and, of course, follow us uh, on higheredlive.com. Thanks for coming, and we will see you all in two weeks with more Admissions Live.